Hello, and welcome to this guided project on extracting NDVI time series. In this project, I'll help you build a script that can extract NDVI values from satellite images at multiple locations and over a long period of time. This project is a great stepping stone to really improve your programming skills. Here, the basic premise of extracting NDVI value from a satellite image is quite simple, but then how do you take this concept and apply it over multiple images and at multiple points? And that can get fairly complex. So we'll go step by step and we'll start with a blank code editor. I'll explain you every step of the way what we are doing. And at the end, you'll end up with a script that you can understand and use and apply it not only for NDVI, but for any kind of satellite data. So let's get started. First, I'll give you an overview of the problem statement, the data that we'll be using, and the technique we'll be applying to extract the time series. Here's the problem statement. Given an image collection, we will learn how to extract NDVI values from that image collection at multiple points or polygons. We'll be using this data set called MODIS. MODIS stands for Moderate Resolution Imaging Spectroradiometer. This is one of the most important sensors in remote sensing and has a wide range of applications. So I'll spend a few minutes explaining a bit of background about this data and how else you may use it. So MODIS is a sensor and that sensor is currently operating on both two different satellites. One is called Equa and one is called Terra. That means it's able to uh, capture images of the earth twice daily. And uh, because of its moderate resolution, it's able to capture the entire earth twice a day. And that's really great and really powerful for many, many different kinds of use cases. It also has a really good spectral resolution. It's got 36 bands in the visible and infrared uh, spectrum. So you are able to get very high spectral resolution, heavy, very high temporal resolution data. And you get a moderate resolution uh, on the spatial resolution side. You have bands uh, one and two, which are 250 meters. And then you have other bands at 500 meter and 1000 meters. Uh, specifically for NDVI, the band one and two, the 250 meter band are the red and the near infrared band. That has, that's why you are able to get NDVI values uh, that uses these two bands at 250 meter resolution. The great thing about MODIS is that not only you get access to the raw scenes, but a whole bunch of derived scientific products. Uh, they range in many different categories, for example, atmospheric products. Say you're working for air quality, uh, MODIS has a really great product called AOT, uh, aerosol optical depth, which can allow you to measure the amount of uh, particle concentration in the atmosphere. Uh, we have a bunch of uh, land products as well. So you get the regular surface reflectance data from MODIS, but also things like pre-calculated vegetation indexes, uh, NDVI and EVI, uh, you also get fire data because of the thermal bands in MODIS, you are able to measure thermal anomalies. And this is very actively used for detecting fires from space. You also get things like evapotranspiration, which are again, very hard to measure on the ground at scale. And MODIS gives you access to this pre-computed products that you can use directly. You have snow cover products and also ocean products. And you know if you're studying uh, sea, this again is really great because you get data like uh, sea surface temperature, chlorophyllic concentrations, which allow you to measure the water quality, especially the coastal water quality. Uh, MODIS data is produced typically in um, different products over, uh, which are composited over a time range. So most of the products you'll get it as an eight day composite or a 16 day composite. And the reason for this is that because it's a daily data, you may have a lot of clouds in the data. And rather than doing the compositing yourself, you can just get um, eight, day, eight day composite where each pixel is the best pixel over the eight day range. And uh, the MODIS algorithm uh, selects the most cloud free pixel from the time range. And you don't have to worry about clouds as much uh, than compared to if you're working with the daily data. Uh, another thing that's confusing about MODIS when you start working because there are so many different products and different combinations. So, you know, the product names can be slightly confusing. The product names start uh, like this, they have uh, short names like MOD09A1006. And what that stands for is just, you know, what the product does and uh, what each product has a code and the temporal resolution and their special resolution are all combined into the product names. So for example, you can get this product, which is from the satellite Terra, you get a surface reflectance data, 
at an eight day composite level at five meters. We have another product, which is a yearly product where you can get a land cover classified data at uh, 500 meter. Another one is say you get an evapotranspiration product at an eight day interval at one kilometer. So as you can see, there are many, many different combinations of spatial and spectral resolution and the product that you can get it. And we'll be using this data set called vegetation indices at a 16 day uh, composite with a 250 meter resolution. And more, this particular product gives you two ready-made indices. One is the NDVI, uh, which is a vegetation index. It measures the healthy vegetation, very widely used in remote sensing, one of the most common indices that everybody would need to use. And this is suitable for like, light to moderate vegetation, but NDVI kind of saturates where it's over uh, very dense vegetation. So Modis also has this, another index called EVI, which along with the red and NIR band, it uses the blue band to really negate the atmospheric effects and soil influence and gives you much better performance over dense canopies. And this product itself uh, takes the eight day composites and then computes the NDVI and aggregates it over 16 days. And that means you get the uh, a pixel over 16 day period, which is the most cloud free pixel and you get the NDVI value there. So you have a start and end date of the composite, but you know the pixel could be anywhere from the 16 day. So generally when you are working with this composites, you, you don't are not sure which day that particular pixel was computed and you will generally assume that it could be anywhere uh, during the uh, 16 days. Uh, this product is also available at multiple resolutions and it's available at a 16 day interval and monthly intervals. So for this particular project, we'll use this product code uh, MOD13Q1, which is a 250 meter spatial resolution in a 16 day composite. And we'll take this images. So we'll get one image every 16 days and you will try to extract NDVI values at every 16 day uh, interval at 100 points. So how do we uh, extract the time series? In Earth Engine, uh, that's quite simple. Given a geometry and an image, you could get the value of that image by using this function called reduce region. And you know you'll get uh, you can use a, a mean reducer for a point. It doesn't matter if you have a polygon. You can use a mean reducer, and you'll get uh, the average NDVI in that geometry from that image. Uh, there's a built-in function called reduce regions, plural. And what that does it instead of allowing you to extract data at one point or a polygon, you can give it a feature collection, which could be polygons or points. And then the, you get an output feature collection where uh, each feature is augmented with the value extracted from the image. So here we can take a single modus image and say for this feature collection of 100 points, uh, give me run the reduce regions function and you get a feature collection with 100 points where each point has the NDVI value. So that's quite simple, but we need to do one more thing. Right? We need to run this on every image in the collection. So what we can do is we can then write a function that uses reduce regions for one image and then map it over the whole modus collection. And that means we can now get this one feature collection for every image for every image in the year. So it's a we have to loop it twice. And once you do that, you'll end up with a all the values you need. So when you do this, when you uh, write this function, map it over the modus collection, what you end up with is something like this, where you have a nested collection, we can call flatten on it. And then you'll end up with this, each feature will have a value of the image ID that it extracted the data from, the NDVI value itself, and the point ID, we here we are calling it the farm ID. So you get this three values, let's call this triplets. So you'll get this triplets if you had 100 points and one year, which would be like 23-ish images. So 2300 triplets, you'll end up uh, with this. And that looks something like this, where if you look at each feature and inspect it, you'll say, oh, this is farm one at the first image of 2010, January 1st, the NDVI value was 0.5473. At farm two, uh, at that same image, the NDVI value was this, and so on. And you, you know, you as you go further, you'll say, "Oh, at farm one, at the second image, this was the value." So you end up with this whole bunch of triplets, and that's fairly useful. You can 
you know, take this, export this feature collection to a CSV, and you'll end up with a, an Excel file like this, where you have 2,300 rows for each farm, you have the date and the DVL values. So that could be useful for certain purposes, but if you really want to extract a time series or plot a time series or do some analysis, we ideally want the data in a slightly different format, where we would want, say, at farm one, what was NDVI on 1st Jan, 16 Jan, 1st Feb, and we want the data as columns. And we just want, say, if you have 100 farms, I want 100 rows, and for each image, I want a column. So how do we get this data into this shape? And this is where the, this project really helps you understand how to program such things in Earth Engine. And we'll see the techniques that you need to apply to take this raw triplets and turn it into a table. So we want a table with one row per farm and one column per image or per date that we're extracting. And then once we have the data in the shape, we can take it to Excel or R or Python and create this nice time series charts or do some analysis with it. So how do we do this? We have all the triplets. What we can do is we can say, let's for each farm, find all the triplets which, have, which are belong to the same farm, combine them, and process it so that you end up with something like this, where you have one feature where there's one farm, and then you have the image ID as the key and the NDVI value as the value. So you end up with a dictionary like this, and you save it to a feature. So you end up with a feature where for each farm, you have now uh, uh, combined all the images and the NDVI into one feature. And now when you take this data and export it, you'll end up with a spreadsheet like this, where for each row, now you have uh, multiple columns, one representing each day. And that is much better to work with this kind of time series data. So we'll, we'll learn how to implement this logic of transforming this triplets into this shape. So there are some more resources here, if you're in interested to learn more about MODIS and the vegetation indices product. This is a user guide. It tells you exactly how this product has generated. If you're curious and you know want to learn more about that. Uh, there is also the formatting function that we're doing. Uh, there's a nice Earth Engine pr uh, presentation that explains this in more detail. And finally, in this project, you're gonna use the MODIS data, but if you want to extract NDVI from a higher resolution data like Sentinel-2, I have a blog post that explains it. And it's a very similar process, but there are certain uh, idiosyncratic things that goes on with Sentinel-2. And if you're running into uh, trouble with uh, the granule overlaps and how to deal with that, this blog post explains you how to deal with that. So that's a good next step. Once you're done with MODIS, try this out in Sentinel and see if you're able to extract the time series from that as well. So that's it, let's get coding. In the next video, you will we'll start with the blank code editor and start building the script. So see you soon.